Hi everyone, Tom here. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I've got a new, rather ambitious project I'm going to try. Now, for a while I've been thinking about putting on some, you know, some rally lights on the brush guard, an LED light bar on the roof rack, uh, some ditch lights, some backup lights and so forth, but I'm haunted by the idea that every time I have to do that, you gotta put in switches, you gotta route wires, you gotta figure out where you're gonna punch the firewall and blah blah blah. Uh, it's, it's just not fun. So. Um, then I stumbled upon this video from Overland Bound where the dude put together this relay box, a power distribution center, to which he connects all of his accessories. I thought, damn, that's really cool. I wonder if I could do that. So I did what any good red-blooded American did. I went on an Amazon shopping spree and bought a lot of stuff from China. I've got a bunch of relays. I've got a couple terminals. Uh, I've got a power distribution block with some fuses. I've got a 50 amp uh, circuit breaker to go from the battery. I've got a couple sheets of quarter inch ABS plastic to attach it all to and miscellaneous uh, wiring peak connectors and so forth. And so this is going to be probably the first of a multi-part video series, my first, where I'm going to attempt to put together a power distribution center into my 2019 Crosstrek and then the subsequent videos will be you know some new additions, light bars or whatever. I really don't know how this is going to go. I've never done something like this before. I've seen one or two videos and that's my inspiration. So I figured, what the heck, I'll make a video on this myself, document the journey, share it with you, and if anything, you can learn from my mistakes, but hopefully you'll see what works well and maybe even emulate it yourself. So stick around, wish me luck, and let's get to work. Okay, before I get started, you might be wondering why I don't just buy an out-of-the-box solution. After all, there's a lot of great products out there from uh, remote wireless uh, uh, relay panels to other ones that come pre-wired that you can just run through the firewall and have all set up. Um, those are all great solutions. I might still go that route, but I figured why not give it a shot and see if I can't build one myself uh, just to see if I can and maybe even save some money in the process. So starting off, I've got a piece of quarter inch ABS plastic that I've decided will be a good platform upon which to mount relays, power distribution block, terminals, and so forth. Now the question is where in the engine bay can I put it? Uh, I don't want to further crowd the driver's side area, either by the strut tower, the master cylinder battery, or whatnot, but there is some room over on the passenger side. There is this section down here um, that I think I'm going to rule out just because I'm not really inclined to have to reach in there anytime I want to hook up or mess with the electronics. So what I think I'm going to do is look for a way to fasten something just above this strut tower and act as a plate to, to mount the relays and stuff. So I guess the first thing i got to do is figure out how to build some kind of standoff here uh, to mount this plastic too. I think I've got an idea. I've got some aluminum rod that I should be able to drill out and then tap to turn into some standoffs to ride off of these hi-hat nuts. And from there, I can mount the plastic and we'll see what happens. All right, I've got some half inch aluminum rod that I've center drilled and uh, I've cut them to about two inch lengths. And the idea is to use these as standoffs on that strut tower. But in order to get them to stay there uh, semi-permanently, I'm gonna need to thread these um, so they can screw on to those hi-hat bolts. So those threads are 10 by one and a quarter, and uh, I should be able to tap this. It's aluminum, it's pretty soft, and uh, let's see how it works. If you've never done this before, it really is by feel. Um, you'll be able to tell when it's getting too difficult and you run the risk of breaking a tap. A tap of this size is not likely to break that easily, but smaller taps are definitely gonna break easy. Okay, let's see how well this worked out. These should just thread right on. Nice. Okay, well, that's that part worked. If we were to put this on here now, obviously it'll need to be cut to size. It's definitely crooked. So now we have to figure out how to cut these to be of the right height and allow this thing to be somewhat level. Hmm, that might be tricky. Okay, this is going to be GAF, ghetto as fuck, but let's see what we can manage here.
All right, we'll take a hacksaw to them and see how it works. I mean, they weren't hard to make, so if I need to make some more and start again, no big deal, right? Okay, folks, so here's what we're gonna do. I've got my quarter inch ABS plastic here and the uh, distance between the top hat bolts is set with these dividers. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the holes on this plastic, drill them out, and then uh, test fit them in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark a, um, uh, a score a line about three quarter inches from the edge, because this is gonna be the part that goes up near the firewall. Okay, so another three quarter line. All right, so there's going to be one hole right there. The other hole will be at this intersection. And then what we'll do is we'll mark a sweep to figure out where that third hole is going to be. So we'll here. Mark an arc, go here, mark an arc, and this is going to be our three spots. So, like usual, I'm going to go ahead and take a center punch, mark these holes, and we'll go ahead and get the drilling. All right, not entirely sure the best way to cut this stuff, but uh, I'm gonna use my trusty old table saw and see how that works. <laughs> table saw and ABS plastic for the win. Okay, those standoffs that we made. Basically, I took some uh, 10 by one and a quarter studs threaded and epoxied them in and these will be our standoffs for the plate we'll test fit our plate not too bad Okay, so Mark 1 was a failure. I overestimated how much room there was under the hood, and by the time I mounted this forward with some relays and the power block, uh, it, the hood was smacking it whenever I was closing it. So I had some interference with this one, so that's not gonna work. At this point, you might be thinking, you know, screw it, I'm just gonna go with the S-Pod or a bow switch or some other out-of-the-box solution. And I wouldn't blame you. Uh, like I said earlier, I still might go that route. As a matter of fact, in hindsight, my intro should have gone something like this. Hey everyone, are you looking for an overcomplicated and untested way to run complex wiring through your car for your accessories? If so, stick around and watch while I fumble my way through doing just that with little more than hubris and good intent. If you are thinking of going with an out-of-the-box solution and would like to see someone who's done that to their cross-trek, check out the Adventure Zombie. On his channel, he's currently installing a Voswitch UV100 Universal Switch Panel on his 21 Cross-Trek Sport, and it's good stuff. If you're still with me though, I would like to introduce you to Mark II of my switch panel. So this version sits much closer to the firewall, still on top of the strut tower, but in a spot where there's ample room under the hood. So let's get a closer look at this thing. Starting on the right, we have a 50 amp circuit breaker. Power from the battery is gonna come along the firewall and attach to this terminal here. The breaker's open right now, so you can simply close it or pop it open using the switch. And then from here, power is going to flow from the breaker into this fuse distribution block. The power distribution block contains four circuits, uh, each one protected by its own fuse. I've got 15 amp fuses in here right now, but what I end up with uh, at the end will depend on whatever accessory I put on each relay. Now I've decided to ground switch each relay, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. But in this configuration, each relay is going to have two powers that I need to run to the distribution block. The red wire is the power to the accessory that the relay is intended to run. 
The white wire is for the relay itself, which is basically part of that inductor that makes up the switch that closes the relay. From each relay, you have a blue and a black wire. The black wire is the ground side for the relay switch itself. The blue wire is on the other side of the red wire that'll power the accessory uh, that you plug in. And this yellow wire, we're not going to use. It's intended to power an accessory when the relay is in an off position. And the way I intend this to work is on each relay, I can run a grounding wire into the cabin for the switch, because it'll be a grounded switch, and I can attach the accessory to this end of the power line and then ground the accessory locally wherever it happens to be mounted. So let me give you a better idea of how a relay system works. Let's take a look at our example here. This power supply is going to be acting as our battery. You've got a power cable and a ground. The power is being distributed at this block here just for the sake of this demonstration. We have our relay with five wires out. We have a, a, an example accessory device, in this case my old fog, and a switch. Now let's simplify things and remove the switch, remove the relay, and say we just wanted to power the light. If you wanted to do that, what you would do is just connect it directly to the battery. And we can do that by jumpering it straight here. Right? Now, we're not going to want to connect these lights directly to the battery. We're going to want to insert a switch. And that's where the relay comes in. The relay is really just a switch. Power is coming from the battery through the red wire and then to the switch. And when the switch is closed, or when it's activated, power is going to come through the blue wire to the accessory, which is then grounded uh, back to either the chassis or the battery. The way a relay works is that it requires power to close the switch, as opposed to a regular switch, which you just toggle manually. And like any other circuit, in order to power the relay's switch, you need a power and a ground. So the power is the white wire, and the ground I've got going to the switch. And this is what I mean when I, when I say I'm ground switching the relay. You can insert this switch either in between the white wire, so you can put the switch between the relay and the power supply, or in my case, you can put the, the switch in between the relay's ground and its battery or chassis ground. I like to do this because this way, I'm not running hot lines through my firewall, and I don't need to run a power line through the firewall and back out. I can simply run the ground line to the switch and then ground the switch to the chassis somewhere within the cabin. So let's see this in action. Right now, the, the relay is unpowered. When I flip this switch, I'm going to energize this relay, which is going to close that circuit between red and blue. So there we go. I've completed the ground for the relay to close its circuit to send power from red to blue to my accessory. And this is how I plan on running my accessories. I mentioned the yellow wire that we're not going to use. Let me show you how that works really quick because all relays pretty much have a standard wiring uh, schema. I'm going to turn off power here and let me bring in a second accessory. And I'm also going to hook it up to a ground, or in this case, to the yellow wire. Let me turn our battery back on and you'll notice the light comes on. Now our relay is not energized. That switch is still in the off position from my, from my last demonstration. And that's because this yellow wire is intended to allow power to flow through from red to yellow when the relay is not energized. If I were to throw that switch and energize the relay, it's going to throw power from the red to the blue and turn on this light. So technically, you can have a single switch serve an off position to power one thing and an on position to power another thing. I have no use for that right now that I can see. So in its off position, I am not going to have this yellow wire connected. I'm just going to cut it off and secure it safely out of the way. For those of you not already familiar with relays, I hope you found that little demonstration helpful. For now, let's get back to our original project, put it in the car and see how it looks. Well, as you can see, we started to lose some daylight there, but here's a shot of that same install during the day. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to leave it installed like this and drive it around for a while to see how well it holds up. 
Well, I think I can come up with something better for those strut tower standoffs. I'll leave that for another day unless this Mark II version fails miserably. Assuming this thing stays put, next I'm going to try to figure out how and where to mount some switches inside the cabin. And then it'll be on to some fun stuff like shopping for ditch lights and light bars. We'll save those for another video though. I hope you enjoyed this one though. I certainly had a good time putting it together, giving it a shot, even if everything didn't go quite as planned. If you have any ideas for how you might have done things differently, or how I could have done something better, please let me know in the comments below. But seriously, as always, thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, have a good one.